Okay, so for this video we're going to have a look at combining ratios, or sometimes also referred to as three-part ratios. We're going to have a look at how we approach these sorts of questions, particularly some of the problems later on as well. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes. I'm going to kick it off with this question to start with. So it says, given that A to B is in the ratio 4 to 5, and B to C is in the ratio 3 to 2, find the ratio A to B to C, and there's our three-part ratio, but we're starting off with two two-part ratios. So th this can only happen when we've got like a, a, what I call a crossover within those ratios. So in that first one that we've got A to B, I'm just going to highlight the B there, because in the next one we've also got B to C, so that one we've also got a B. Now in those ratios, the B is represented by the 5, and it's represented by the 3 in the second one. So as you can see, both those numbers are different. Now if they were the same, we could just combine this straight away. But that's not a problem because we can make them the same quite nice and easy. And it does say give your answer in its simplest form and we'll discuss that in a second. Now if, we're, if I just write the ratio A to B to C, and let's just see what we have at the moment. So at the moment we've got 4 to 5, so I'll put that underneath the A and the B. We've got that in the first one. Now in the next one we've got 3 to 2 for B to C. Now I can't just write the 3 over the top of the 5, so I'm just going to write it on the next level down or the next layer down, however you want to look at it. I'm just going to write that there, 3 to 2. Now what I want to do is I want to make that B number the same in both, and as long as it's the same in both, I can, can, I can ignore that it's two different ratios, and I can almost sort of slot them together or squish them together, however you want to sort of visualise that. But I'm just going to think about what number I could make that. Now 5 and 3, the lowest common multiple of 5 and 3, and we can work out a multiple quite nice and easy just by doing 3 times 5, and that does actually give us the lowest common multiple, in this case it's 15. So I'm going to make that number 15 in the middle. Now in order to do that, if I want to change a ratio, I can do it just like I can change a fra fraction and I can make equivalent fractions, I can make an equivalent ratio. It's going to make the numbers bigger. So I'm going to get the ratio on the top here, the 4 to 5, I'm going to times that ratio by 3. That's going to turn the 4 into a 12 and the 5 into a 15, and that's what we're looking for, that B number to be 15. So that 4 is going to become 12, and the 5 is going to become 15. There we go, and that's that first ratio changed. Now I also want to change the one below because I want that 3 to be a 15, so the ratio below I'm going to have to times that one by 5. And if we times that one by 5, the 3 becomes 15, so I don't need to write that down, that's what we're aiming for, and the 2 becomes 10. There we go, and there's our ratio, 12 to 15 to 10. Now, we do need to have a look at this point. Does it simplify? Now, the one that I've written out doesn't actually simplify. Now, the reason that mine doesn't simplify is I found the lowest common multiple of 3 and 5, but obviously you could have found a different multiple. You could have gone for 30 or 60 or anything else that sort of 3 and 5 goes into, in which case you would have had to simplify at this point. But because I've gone for the lowest common multiple there and I've got the 15, it, it actually just means that this ratio doesn't simplify. Now, it doesn't mean it won't always if I find the lowest common multiple, but in this particular circumstance, it hasn't so there's my final answer 12 to 15 to 10 right let's have a look at another question with some slightly different wording okay so this question says the ratio of fish to dogs is 3 to 2 and the ratio of dogs to cats is 5 to 3 find the ratio of cats to fish right so cats to fish obviously we can't find straight away because fish is in our first ratio and cats is in our second one so until we've got this all combined we're not going to be able to actually compare those two so we need to make a three-part ratio here so it says find the ratio of cats to fish and give your answer in its simplest form so let's get rid of that let's just remember what we're looking for cats to fish Right, so at the moment, what's our crossover? Our crossover's dogs. So we have dogs in one, represented by the two, dogs in the other, represented by the five. So if we write ourselves a three-part ratio here, let's go fish to dogs to cats. And I always try and make sure that crossover number is in the middle there, although you can do this if it's not. I just quite like it visually when it's in the middle. So at the moment, we've got fish to dogs, three to two, and we've got dogs to cats, five to three, which I'll put on the level, level below again. So having a look at these now, 2 and 5, now the lowest common multiple of 2 and 5 is 10, so let's make that middle number 10. So I'll times the top one by 5, that's going to turn that 2 into a 10, but it also turns that 3 into a 15. So we've got 15 to 10 now for that ratio. The one below, to make that a 10, we're going to have to times that one by 2. That's going to make the 5 a 10 like we're looking for, and it makes the 3 become a 6. And there we go, and there's our final answer. And again, because I found the lowest common multiple, it has actually resulted in me just having a fully simplified ratio there in my final step. But there we go. Uh, we need to actually find the ratio uh, in the question here. So it said find the ratio of cats to fish. Now at the moment, let's have a look. Cats is here, 6. So cats, let's just label this to the side. Cats to fish. Cats is 6, let's just make sure we get that in the right order, and fish is on the left there, 15 
and there we go, six to 15. Now, hopefully you've spotted here, uh, this is not in its simplest form. So six to 15 can actually simplify because both of those numbers there divide by three. So we can simplify this down. So divide six by three, we get two. And if we divide 15 by three, we get five. So there's our final answer for the full question there, two to five. Right, okay, here's a couple for you to have a go at then. Okay, so there's two questions there, very similar to the ones we've just done. So have a go, see if you can do, see if you can complete these. Pause the video there, and we'll have a go at the answers in a sec. Right, okay, so for this first one then, A to B to C, and the numbers we've got at the moment, we've got three to seven, and we've got two to five. Now the lowest common multiple of two and seven is 14. So we'll times the top one by two, and the bottom one by seven. So we'll get six, we'll get 14 in the middle, and we'll get 35 on the right there. So six to 14 to 35, let's just double check that. We've times the top one by two, six and 14, the bottom one by seven, 14 and 35. Perfect, happy with that as a final answer, and it is fully simplified again as we found the lowest common multiple. Over to the next one, fish to dogs to cats. So we've got fish, dogs, and cats. And we've got four to three on the first ratio and five to two on the next one. So we've got a three and a five again. So again, we're gonna times this to make 15. So we'll times the top one by five, the bottom one by three, and that's gonna give us 20 to 15 to six. And then again, we need to look at our last step here. So it says find the ratio of fish to cats. So fish we've got there is 20 and cats we've got there is six. So that would be 20 to six. And again, it wants it in its simplest form. So we'll divide both sides there by two and we'll get 10 to three. And there we go. And there's our final answer for that particular question. Right, okay, so that's how we're gonna approach three-part ratios. Let's have a look at our next bit. Okay, so this is where we're gonna apply some of our three-part ratios onto some further problems. We're gonna look at sharing in a ratio as well, which again is something I discussed in the previous video, which is part one linked in the description. So obviously check that one out if you haven't already, but we're gonna have a look at actually applying these combined ratios when we've got some further problems to actually analyze here. So it says Anna, Beth and Charlotte share 138 pounds. The amount Anna and Beth get is in the ratio four to five, and the amount Beth and Charlotte get is in the ratio two to one. How much does Anna get? Okay. So so we've got three people, we've got two separate ratios, so this is our little hint that we're going to make this three-part ratio. So we're going to make that to start with and then we'll have a look at actually answering the question. So we've got A to B to C and at the moment we've got Anna and Beth sharing in the ratio 4 to 5 and Beth and Charlotte sharing in the ratio 2 to 1. And there we go, so we can line that all up just like before. So let's make that 10 in the middle, so we'll times the top one by 2 and the bottom one by 5 and that's going to give us 8 and 10 on our top ratio and 10 and 5 on our bottom ratio. And there we go, there's our three-part ratio done. Now we can actually have a look at the question because it says that they share £138. How much does Anna get? So all we're doing is we're sharing in a ratio just like we've done before. So we just have a look at all these three parts, which is, you know, they're all sharing it. It doesn't say that there's a difference between them. It doesn't say that one of them's getting 138. So it's all of them there. So if we add those all together, 8 plus 10 plus 5 is 23. So we've got 23 parts that it says is equal to 138 pounds. And just like before, when we looked at ratios, we're looking at the value of one part. So to get the value of one part, we need to divide both sides here by 23. So 138 divided by 23 gives us the value of six. So one part is equal to six pounds. Now we don't need to go ahead and find out how much everyone gets because we only really care about what Anna gets there. So Anna in our new ratio that we're using is the eight. So Anna's getting these eight parts and eight times six pounds gives us our value for Anna and eight times six is 48 pounds. So Anna gets 48 pounds and that is our final answer there. And we'll just highlight that off as a final answer. There we go, 48 pounds. Right, there we go. So just thinking about obviously applying some uh, sharing in a ratio as well as this three part combined ratio. We're gonna have a look at one more question where the wording is slightly trickier and here it is. 
Okay, so it says Dylan, Emily and Frank share some money. The amount of money Dylan gets to the amount of money Emily gets is in the ratio four to three. The amount of money that Dylan gets to the amount that Frank gets is in the ratio five to two. Given that Emily gets 21 pound more than Frank, work out how much Emily gets. So we've got one of these questions here where it's saying somebody gets more than the other. So if we can get a three part ratio put together, we'll have a look at how many parts more this person gets. So let's start putting this together. We've got Dylan, Emily, and Frank. Now it says, and you've got to be careful with the wording here, it says Dylan to Emily is four to three, so four to three, and then it says Dylan to Frank. Okay, it says the amount Dylan gets, I'm just going to highlight this, the amount Dylan gets to the amount Frank gets is in the ratio five to two. So that's not going to line up perfectly in the middle here just because of the way the wording was given. So what's that? Dylan is five, Frank is two. There we go. So it's not quite lined up as nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rearrange these and I'm going to write it in a different way. You don't have to do this, but I just prefer that number being in the middle, although it really doesn't need to be. You don't need to worry about it. So I'm just going to rearrange this. I want D in the middle. So I'm going to have Emily to Dylan to Frank. Yeah, and honestly, you really don't have to do this. But for the first one there, I've got three to four because I'm now swapping it around the other way, which may just slightly confuse things if you're not happy doing that. But I just prefer that number being in the middle. So I'm just going to do it like that. All right, there we go. So, um, in fact, I might just do it both sides. You can decide for yourself which one you prefer. I'm going to times the top one by five and the bottom one by four. That's going to make 20 in the middle. So we'll get 15, 20, and then the bottom one, that two becomes eight. Again, so I could have done that on the side over here on this one, times five times four, and we'd have got 20 to 15, to eight. So it really doesn't matter obviously which way you do it. I just really like that number being in the middle, but you obviously don't have to go about doing that. Now it says here that given that Emily gets £21 more than Frank, so Emily and Frank are these two. So Emily is getting an extra seven parts. Emily gets 15, Frank gets eight, so that's plus seven parts. So those extra seven parts are equal to 21 pounds. So obviously from there we can work out the value of one part. We can do 21 divided by seven and that equals three pounds. So each part is worth three pounds. Now it says in the question obviously work out how much Emily gets. Now it doesn't matter which ratio we use here or which side you've done it as long as you make sure you use this Emily number which is 15. So we can finish that off because Emily is going to get, let's just write this here, 15 lots of the three pounds. So 15 times three, and that equals 45 pounds that Emily gets. I'm obviously just thinking about how we've got to there, finding that gap between the two. So there we go, she gets 45 pounds. Uh, just making sure that you find out the value of one part again, just like we have in the previous video, looking at obviously some of these ratios. But there we go, that's how to approach a couple of these questions here where you've got some split ratios that you need to combine first. Right, okay, so here's a couple for you to have a go at. Right, okay, so there's two questions for you to have a go at. So pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Right, okay, so for this first one, we have James, Ellie, and Alicia. There we go, and it says that they share 120 pounds. It says the amount James and Ellie get is in the ratio three to two, and the amount Ellie and Alicia get is in the ratio four to five. How much does Ellie get? Now you might not have spotted this when you're having a go, but actually we only have to change one of the ratios here, look, because actually I can just times the top one by two, and that's gonna turn that two for Ellie into a four. So that would just make it six to four, and then the other one stays as a five. Now you could have obviously changed them all if you wanted, you could have made it eight in the middle there, but obviously it doesn't matter, you're gonna get the same answer either way. So let's have a look at what we get when we just approach it like this. So going from here, uh, it says they all share 120, so it's all of these numbers here, and they add up to 15, so we've got 15 parts that equal 120 pounds. And obviously we wanna know the value of one part. There we go, so we'll divide by 15, and 120 divided by 15 is eight. So each part is worth eight pounds. So to finish this off, how much does Ellie get? Well, Ellie here is the four. So if we do four lots of the eight pounds, there we go, we get 32 pounds for the amount that Ellie gets. There we go, and we'll just highlight that off. Done. Right on to our next one. So we've got Anna, Bruno, and Charlie. So A, B, and C. And the amount of money that Bruno gets is in the ratio. So Anna to Bruno is five to three. 
there we go and then Bruno to Charlie is in the ratio of 5 to 2 that's quite nice that lines up nicely on this question there we go so given that Anna gets 57 pound more than Charlie work out how much Bruno gets so Anna gets 57 pounds more than Charlie and how much Bruno gets that's what we're going to work out right so well let's create our, our three-part ratio then so we'll make it 15 in the middle again so we'll times that by 5 and this one by 3 and that's going to be 25 for A 15 for B and then times on the bottom one by three gives us six at the end there. Right, so there is our three part ratio. Let's have a look. So it says Anna gets 57 pounds more than Charlie. So Anna and Charlie, what's the gap between them? Okay, so that is a gap of 19. There we go, so we've got 19 parts. In fact, I've not got much space there. Let's just write this at the top. So that's plus 19. Let's write this up here. So we get 19 parts equals 57 pounds so divide that by 19 and we get one part equals three pounds there we go so one part equals three now what it says is how much does Bruno get well Bruno here is our 15 so Bruno gets 15 lots of three so 15 times three pounds there you go equals 45 there we are, so Bruno gets £45, and that's the final answer there for our second question. All right, let's have a look at something slightly different then. Okay, so there's a lot more words here, and this is a good question, because there's actually two different ways of approaching this. So I'm going to approach it in the way that we've been doing all video, but then I might discuss another way that we could actually potentially have a look at this question. So it says, in a pack of pens, the number of red pens and the number of blue pens are in the ratio 3 to 5, and the number of blue and to, uh, to green is in the ratio 3 to 7. It says there are 27 red pens in the pack, how many green pens are in the pack? So let's have a look. We've got red to blue to green. And at the moment we've got 3 to 5 for red to blue and we've got 3 to 7 for blue to green. So again let's just approach this like normal, make our three part ratio. So all times this one by 3, this one by 5. And let's see what we get, we get 9 to 15 and on the bottom there we get 35. And there we go, there's our ratio for the three part ratio for these pens. And it says there are 27 red pens, so let's have a look. Underneath red then we know that this number here is 27 so the nine parts equals 27 so just like I did before if you get this scenario you can just think all right well what do I times nine by to get 27 and that number's three okay obviously we can do the working out to the side 27 divided by nine is three and that just means we just need to times all of these by three to get our full ratio so 15 times three would be 45 and 35 times three gives us 105 there we go one zero five so it says how many green pens are in the pack well green pens is that last one there 105 so that's our final answer 105 green pens so there we go that's quite nice and easy just doing that using a three-part ratio obviously just allocating that number to the one part in that three-part ratio uh, and just obviously thinking about it like that now you could actually approach this question in a slightly different way because it does say there are 27 red pens so before actually going about changing any of this if we look at the original ratio look if there are 27 red pens, then how do we get that 3 to become 27? We would times it by 9, and we can do that to the 5 as well, so we know that there's 45 blue pens, and that's right from the start. There we go, and that matches our 45 in our final answer. Okay, just thinking about what we did there, we just times both of those numbers in the ratio by, five, uh, by, by 9. Sorry. So if we know there's 45 blue pens, we can also apply that to this ratio here. So if that one's 45, then what do we times 3 by to get 45? We times it by 15. So you can also just times 7 by 15, and that would give you 105. There we go. So you can just do it straight from the ratios up there, although that is very, is very unique to this one type of question. But obviously just a different way that you could think about it if you were stuck on a question like this, potentially. You could always think about it in that way as well. But it does only work for these sort of in a unique way for these questions. But here we go. Here's one for you to have a go at, and here it is. Okay, so here we go, here's your question. So pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so this question says, in a village, the number of houses to the number of flats are in the ratio seven to four, and then flats to bungalows. So we've got houses to flats to bungalows. And the first one's in the ratio seven to four, and then flats to bungalows is in the ratio eight to five. So we've got this similar scenario here, look where you only actually had to change the one. So if we just times the top one by two, that's gonna make that crossover number there become an eight. So we get 14 to eight 
to five. And again, you could have changed them both if you wanted. You'll still get to the final answer. You might just get some not so nice decimals along the way. But there we go. It says now that there are, let's have a look. What does it say? It says that there are 50 bungalows. So that's 50 under here, under the bungalows. Let's just rewrite that. That's five, five's not very good. There we go. So we've got 50 bungalows. And all we have to think is, how do we get from five to 50? We times by 10. There we go. So we just need to times all of these by 10. And then we'll answer the question. So eight times 10 in the middle is 80. 14 times 10 is 140. And what's the question asking for? It says, how many houses are there? Well, houses is right there, 140. And there is our final answer, 140 houses. Right, okay, so before we finish, I've got one more type of question for us to have a look at. It's just something a little bit different just to finish off with, something that's just uh, a different way of thinking to some of these questions. But we'll have a look at that question now before we finish this up. Okay, so this question here looks like a three-part ratio. We've got the points A, B, C and D line order on a straight line. We've got A to B, B to D is 2 to 5, A, C, C, D is 4 to 7, and we want to find the ratio A to B, B to C, C to D. So it looks like, and it is going to be a three-part ratio the way we look at it, but it looks um, like we're going to have to try and find some sort of crossover. Now, if you have a look, A to B is not in either of the other ratio. B to D is also not in either of the other ratios. So we've not got a crossover. So we're gonna to have to think about this slightly differently. Now it does say that they lie on a straight line. So if we just imagine this line, let's just imagine, here it is, here's a line. We've got A, B, C, D. And let's just label this up. So we've got A, B, C, and D. Now it says the ratio A to B, B to D is two to five. So that's this bit here. And I'm gonna do this in a different color. We've got A to B there. And that's 2 and then B to D to the end 5 then we've got the other ratio that's given to us we've got A to C which is 4 and we've got C to D which is 7 right so we haven't got a crossover but we have got totals and what we're going to have a look at is if we have something like this sort of scenario where we can draw a little picture we can actually just combine the or both these ratios together by looking at them if the totals add up to the same what i mean by that look is two and five gives us a total over here of seven the other one four and seven over here gives us a total of eleven now, if they both had the same total, this would make this problem a lot easier. So let's think, what's the lowest common multiple of seven and 11? Well, that is 77. So to make these numbers out of 77, I would have to times the top one by 11 and the bottom one by seven. And that would give me new numbers here on my number line. So if we change this, look, we've got 22, when we times that by 11, and here we've got 55. And on the bottom there, four times seven is 28, and seven times seven is 49. Now that they have the same totals, we can pretty much just get the readings from our picture. So A to B, we've got up here 22, and that's the first part in our three part ratio there. So let's have a look. We've got A to B, which is 22. Now we're looking at B to C. B to C we can't find because it's crossed over on the other two, so there's no way we can get that at the moment. But then C to D, We've got that, that's given to us down here. C to D is that 49. So we've got 49 at the end there, we're just missing the one in the middle. And here's a bit of an idea of how do we actually find that number in the middle. Now we know that the total over here had to add up to 77, that's what we did. We made these both add up to 77. So this total that we're looking at has to add up to 77, okay? Just like those other two, these have to add up to 77. So what have we got at the moment? We've got 22 and 49, let's add those together, see what we've got so far, 49 and 22 make 71 so to get from 71 to 77 we would have to add in an extra six and there we go and there's our three part ratio here from a diagram so something a little bit different okay you do have to draw a little picture for this i think it's probably quite difficult unless you draw a picture but there's just something a little different just to finish this off when we're looking at this combining ratios and rather than looking at a crossover we're looking at the total between them so that we're able to combine them together and have a look at the, these sorts of missing distances in the middle okay so i'm only going to do one of these questions i've got one for you to have a go at now so here it is right so here's your last question so pause the video there have a go and we'll go over the answers in a sec Right, okay, so A, B, C, and D lie on a straight line. So let's draw it out again, A, B, C, D. There we go, we've got A to B, C, and D. And let's put these ratios on. So we've got A to B is three, B to D is five. And then underneath, we've got A to C 
is 5 and C to D is 6. Now let's have a look what we've got as the totals then. So 3 and 5 adds up to make 8 and 5 and 6 add up to make 11. So we've got a very similar scenario here. We're going to make the lowest common multiple which is 88. So we'll times the top numbers by 11, the bottom numbers by 8 and let's see what our new totals are here. So we've got 33 and we times that by 11 and we've got 55 here. On the bottom we're going to times it by 8, so 5 times 8 is 40 and 6 times 8 is 48. There we go. Right, so we have a total here. What's the total of these? So they both add up to 88 now, don't they? 8 times 11 is 88 and 11 times 8 is 88. So we've got the same total on both, so we should be able to make a fair comparison here. So let's have a look. We've got A to B, B to D, sorry, B to C and then C to D. Now we've got one of the, we've got well, this one up here, we've got 33, that's from A to B, so we can put 33 in. There we go. We've also got, just like before, we've got the 48 down here from C to D, so that's 48. And let's add those together and see what we're missing. So we've got 48, 33, that adds up to 81. There we go, so we are missing 7 to get that 81 up to the 88. So there's our final answer, there's our three-part ratio, and there is just something a little different to be thinking about with some of these sort of nastier three-part ratio questions. But there we go, hopefully it was helpful, if it was useful, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I will see you for the next one.